So today, as I've mentioned a couple times, um, should be pretty interactive. And Michaela, you're on deck for a bit in a while. The agenda we're gonna I'm gonna introduce Distill. It is an introduction because obviously I can't cover everything there is to know about Distill in one class. But I hope that we'll be able to get through quite a bit of it. Um, and you have should have a pretty good overview and my goal is that by the end, all of you will have a site um, that you can deploy, okay? So the learning objectives for today is basically a one thing, right? <laughs> Get at least a basic site deployed. And I, th I think, I hope, we should actually have this within the next 20 or 30 minutes, okay? And it's going to be basic, but then by uh, when after we do that, then we'll talk about ways to expand on it and whatever. Okay, so distill. This is the link to the distill website. Um, I mentioned here in the slide somewhere, but there was just like maybe I don't even know if it was a month ago, a really big update to distill. Um, and so some of everything I'm showing you is up to date but there are even more new things that you can do with Distill. I chose to talk about Distill today. So there's basically three website options with R um, that are, are straightforward anyway. One is R Markdown Websites, which is probably the simplest. The second is Distill, which is a little bit more complicated, but not too much more complicated. And the third is Blogdown with Hugo. And that's what I use for the course website but it's also like the wild, wild west. I mean, it's like, it's basically web development generally, right? Like there's so much stuff out there and every site, every theme that you use is a little bit different. So, um, and every theme is really different in terms of how well they're maintained, how often they're updated, how often things break, et cetera. Distill, to me represents a, a good compromise between our markdown sites, which are really simple and not very customizable, although you can do some customization if you want, and blog down, which is like, like full on, you can do anything you want, right? The still websites are going to be really, really stable. So you, sh you shouldn't have any problems with your website breaking because packages update or whatever. Um, and they're pretty extensible in terms of there's lots of stuff that you can change and lots of things you can add on to them. And there's a, a lot of features that come with it just sort of built right in. Okay. So that's why I chose to still, I think it is a, a good sort of happy compromise between um, really simple and full on like web development. So disclaimer and some assumptions. Um, this is a very basic intro. It's only one class, right? One lecture. Um, it can do a lot of things that we won't get to, but I'm hoping we'll be able to cover the things that I think are sort of the most important. I assume that most of you have never created or deployed a website before. If you have, then some of this might be a little slow, but that's okay. All right. And then I, I have the note about the about it being recently updated. The website, which is linked there again, is going to be the definitive source. That's where you'll always want to go if you have questions about specific things, about how to do things. But um, everything in the lecture, in this lecture at least, is up to date. OK, so please follow along. If you have not yet installed Distill, please run either install.packages.distill or remotes install GitHub rstudio slash distill. Please do that now. Give you 30 seconds. Okay, if you've gotten that done, give me a thumbs up, either the emoji or on your screen. Okay, good. All right, off we go. We're gonna start by creating a new distill blog. So after you have done this, and I'm gonna actually just go ahead and switch 
to R Studio. After you have done this, um, this I'm working on some mapping stuff for next class. Can you tell? Um, let me just actually do session restart R. Okay. Um, once you have done that, then we're going to go close this stuff out. Sorry. We're going to, you can either do it here, right, to create a new new project, or you can do it over here, which manages sort of all your projects. And we're going to say new project. Okay. You may not be able to see my, let me see if I can add that. Can you see that? You can see that, right? Yeah. Okay. All right. Good. Okay. We're going to start a new project in a new directory. Okay, so we're not gonna, we are going to push this to GitHub, but we're doing the project first version. Okay, so we'll walk through that too. We're gonna do it in a new directory. And if you've installed the still, you should now have, instead of just new project, our package, shiny web application, you should be able to scroll down here and you should have distill blog. There's also distill website, but we're not gonna do that. We're gonna do distill blog. Okay, they're very similar, but what we're focusing on for today is to still blog, okay? If you don't see that, then go ahead and quit out of RStudio altogether, open it back up again and try that again, and hopefully it'll work that time. Okay, so I'm gonna create a new distill blog. This part is super important. You have to click this configure for GitHub pages, okay? And that's for deployment later. What that's gonna do is basically create a docs folder. And that docs folder is gonna have all of you, everything that your website needs to publish to the web, okay? So every time you say build website, it'll push everything into that folder that needs to be used to deploy the website, okay? So make sure to click that. You can browse here to go to wherever you want to, um, to have your project, right? I'm just gonna put mine on the desktop and I'm gonna call it class demo. Then we have title. Actually, I'm gonna change this to a dash. We have title, which is going to be the actual title of your blog, okay? Whatever you want your blog to be called. So I'm gonna call mine the amazing, awesome world of awesomeness, okay? You can call it whatever you want, obviously. Once you have all of that done, then you're just going to say create project. It's going to then create the project for you. It's going to create a bunch of stuff, and then it's going to switch for you over to that project. Okay. Now, immediately, I have a bunch of stuff, right? Because this stuff that I have here is my website, basically. Okay. So we're going to talk about some of this stuff over here, what it is, et cetera. But what I'd like you to do to start is actually just go straight into posts. And you'll see there's a welcome post right there. You can open that up. And this is the exact, it's just an example post. Okay. What I'm going to do, the, the reason I'm doing this is because the way that distill works is every time you say create a new post, it goes to the last post to find the author. And I've had problems in the past when I don't change this first post where it will it will still look to the first post. So you could either delete this all together or just come in here and say, okay, my name is not Nora Jones. And my URL is something else. Okay, you could just also delete this URL if you wanted to. My affiliation is going to be University of, University of Oregon. And that URL is going to be that. OK. Other than that, everything there is good. So I'll say, OK, let's go ahead and knit that file. And when I do that, um, I don't know if you can see that, but uh, you'll get basically an a post for your website, OK? Now, uh, what I'm going to do 
is let's say I want to create a new blog post. Okay. I'm going to first load the, li the library. So I'll load library distill. And notice I'm doing this down in the console. I'm not doing this in a post. Okay. Because everything I'm going to be doing here is all sort of interactive stuff. It's things that need to be done once and then we're done. We don't ever come back to it to do it again. Okay. Because I'm going to be creating a post. If I put create post in an actual R markdown document, then every time that post gets rendered, it's going to try to create the post again. Okay. And that can run into errors because you'll say create post and you're going to say the post is called um, like hello world or whatever. And then it'll try to create the hello world post every single time you render that. And that's going to end up with errors. Okay. Because it's going to say it already exists or whatever. So I'll say library distill. And now I'm going to say create post. And then I just put notice here's my arguments, the title of the collection, blah, 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 blah. The author is auto, right? And that auto is going to be pulled from this post that we just edited. Okay. So for my post, I'm going to say some stuff with models. I don't know, whatever. And that's all I do. I say create create post, and now I get a new post, OK? Let's say now I want to actually build my entire website. Well, first, maybe I should modify this a little bit because um, I don't want all of this stuff. So let's say I'm going to create a, um, a plot down here. And let's say I want to change the font of that plot, right? Then what I might want to do is here in ops chunk set, set the device to be rag PNG, right? Which we talked about last time because that will now access the rag PNG device for all of my fonts. Okay. Now I can create, a, I can put some, some text down here. Look at this cool plot down below. And then we'll just actually create the post or the plot. All right. Um, I saw somebody looks like was on the chat. Um, okay, hang on just one second. So then we'll say library tidyverse. And up here, I'm going to say message equals false because I don't want all the messages from tidyverse. And then I'll go ggplot. Um, empty cars, and I can never remember what these are, so let's look at it like this. And we'll say, all right, AES, DISP, MPG, plus geom point, plus geom smooth, plus theme. Uh, let's see, what is it? Um, How do you change? Now I gotta go Google real quick. Unless anybody remembers off the top of their head. Uh, text. All right, so text. Oops. Text. Element. Text. Family equals, and I'll say Roboto. Okay. Oops, I got to actually run that. OK, and then we get something like that. And that's cool. This has been changed, but let's make it a little more obvious. We'll say labs title equals a boring plot. Oops. OK, there we go. Now we're going to knit that. And we have a post. Let me switch my share um, there. So now I'm sharing two things. Can you see that now? Yes, no? No response. <laughs> OK, so here's my post now, right? Look at this cool plot down below, right? Blah, blah, blah. And then here's a boring plot. OK, 
some stuff with models. All right, so that's cool. Let's say I want to build my entire website now. Okay. What I would do is come over here to this build tab and then click build website. And what that's going to do is basically render everything um, that needs to be rendered, and then it's going to create it. So if I open this in the browser now, um, let me switch my share to actually Safari. Now my website is going to look like this. Okay, so notice I have the amazing awesome world of awesomeness up here. That's my site title. And then I have my site title repeated down here. And I have two posts. And you can see the date for both of these is the same. But because this one has a plot, it's going to, by default, um, put a little preview of that plot there, which is pretty nice, right? And then we can click here. And here's our actual post, all right? We also have the home, which is just going to bring us back here. And then we have this about, which has nothing in it yet. That about comes from this uh, about.rmd here. OK, so you can see there's nothing in there at this point. So we can say this blog is really cool. And then look at me. And then we, we could put, you know, a picture of you down here. Right? So um, I'm going to pause there for a second. I know, uh, because I saw through the chat, at least, Hyunjin, you're having problems. Give me an emoji if you're not able to get this basic site rendering working, like either a thumbs down or something. <laughs> OK. OK, so a few of you I'm seeing are, are not able to get it. Um, can you, okay, all right, so one of you, tell me what the error is that you're seeing. So I try to start a new project, but there is this error, error of saying R code execution error. OK. Have you tried quitting our studio altogether? Yes, I restarted the session. and. It's the so did you do session restart R, or did you actually quit our studio altogether? I quit it altogether as well. OK. And then when you open it back up again, it, you're still getting the same error? Yes. Huh. OK, did you install from GitHub or did you install from CRAN? Uh, a CRAN. OK. Are the other people that are having errors, are you having a similar sort of thing or are you having something different? I have the, I, my error shows error in load namespace rack. There is no package called rack. Oh, OK. Well, so that is from, um, that's from last lecture. So you just need to do install that packages rag. And then that should work. And Weisha, were you having tro trouble too? Yeah, I just, I don't really know where I went wrong. Um, I just tried to do the, like, I don't see the some stuff with the models um, post when I clicked build website. OK, that's just because I created that post after. So that just you just probably need to down here in the console do library distill mm -hmm. and then create post, create underscore post, and then put the name of the post there that you want it to be. So some stuff with models, or you could call it you know, my post or whatever, anything you want to call it. Does that work for you? Do you get a new post that comes up? Um, I did that, and it's yeah. So it like it created the new tab, um, but it's just not popping up. I'm not sure why. Okay, so if you go into your posts folder here, yeah. mm -hmm. do you see a post there? I do. Okay, and then if you go inside of that, do you see the RMD file? Yes. Okay, so if you just open that up, 
then you can just edit it directly from there. Okay, so the fact that it's not showing up in the build website, like... So you need to probably knit it first, um, okay. make sure that's working, because the problem is sometimes you can have errors in these individual R&D files, and then they won't show up. Although, I, I bet what's going on with you is... Um, so, okay, here's the next thing. This index.rmd file, everybody see that? Let's open that up and you should see listing posts like that. If you do not see that, then your posts will not show up like I just showed with the blog part. And that would mean that you probably clicked distill website instead of distill blog. Okay. Other people having problems? Hyunjin, I think I might just need to meet with you after class to figure out what's going on. I, I don't know how to help you. I, I looked at the error code and it seems to be the issue with like the R is somehow not recognizing like a long directory address. So I just put a really simple one like D drive D and it works now. Okay. You know what that could be is um, file path issues. Sometimes if you have weird names in your file path, R has a hard time recognizing it. So like spaces and things like that can often be problematic. Um, so yeah. All right, so do we have, uh, anybody else still having issues? Okay, so everybody's gotten to this point then. Is that right? Okay. All right, so now, we basically have a website, all right? What we're gonna do now is we need to get it published, okay? So we're gonna publish this website now just as it is, all right? And it's obviously super, super basic, but you, sh you can see how it would build, right? You would just do create post, that gives you just an, a basic RMD and you can write in the RMD just like you would in any, any R markdown file and then knit that file, make sure it's working, make sure you don't have any errors in it. And then every once in a while, come and click build website, that'll build the whole thing. And then it'll make it'll push things to your docs folder. So as I mentioned, this docs folder, you should have that docs folder if you click that button um, for GitHub pages. And when you do that, this is everything that's actually going to be published in here, okay? So you should never have to go into the docs folder ever really. The docs folder is created for you. It's all automatic. You shouldn't ever have to modify anything in there. Okay. So what we're going to do to publish this now is we need to first get it on GitHub. Okay. So I'm going to go to Git Kraken. All right. And then I'm going to click this folder over here and I'm going to say init. Right? I want to initialize a repository. So I click that. I'm going to say local only. And then I'm already in user Daniel desktop. So the name of my folder is class demo. Okay. And now you can see this is being initialized in there. And the full path is user Daniel desktop class demo. Okay. That's the folder that my website is in. Default branch name is main. That's good. Get ignore template, we'll go ahead and add R in there. Okay, license, you can add a license if you want. Okay, and then we're gonna say create repository. Notice this is creating a local repository, Not, but we haven't connected it to the remote yet. Okay, so this has a bunch of stuff in it, a lot of which um, is going to be see somebody's in the chat again, but I can't actually see it. If you want, you can just interrupt me anytime. So where, I can't find the chat. Oh, there it is, okay. Um, I think a lot of us are having issues with the RAG package and text shaping. <laughs> okay, so Roboto, with the Roboto one, that's um, from a, if you don't have that installed on your computer, that won't work. So I probably shouldn't have used that as an example. You can do Times New Roman or something like that that everybody has. Um, yeah, but it should, uh, 
the rag one, don't worry about the text stuff for now. If you're having trouble with that, we can come back to it later. So just don't worry about the fonts, okay? We can come back to it later if you want, um, but just create, let's focus on the websites for now, okay? I was trying to do that to kind of meld the two lectures, but yeah, try to install rag if you ha are having issues. And if um, it asks you to install text shaping after that, then do that. But if you're having issues, just abandon it. Don't don't spend so much time on that that you're getting lost on what we're doing today, okay? And we can always come back. We can all, always circle back for that too. Okay. Daniel, when yep. you were initializing repo, did you check the box initialize with LFS? I didn't catch that. No, LFS oh, okay. is large file systems, and that is a paid thing with GitHub. So you'd have to actually pay money to do that. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Okay, so I have not made any real commits yet. So this is, and this is only local, right? So this is a local repository and it's looking at everything right now, okay? Most of this is stuff that I'm gonna wanna commit. A lot of it probably doesn't look real um, clear, like what it all is, but um, we're not gonna worry about it too much because a lot of it is just sort of website stuff. Okay, so like there's a lot of CSS stuff, there's web fonts, things, um, et cetera, okay? So for now, I'm just gonna say, okay, stage all changes. We're gonna have our summary to say, create initial website, okay? Create our initial website. That's it, we're good there. Now we need to connect it to the remote, okay? We don't have a remote at this point. So we are going to go to GitHub and we are going to create a remote. Okay, so we'll go to GitHub and then over here, we're going to say new repository. If I'm going too fast or whatever, please let me know, okay. I'm going to call my, the my get Kraken DA just says could not find a compatible repository. Okay. And I can't figure out why because it's. Are you sure that your well, path was correct? Um, I'm just opening it from within get Kraken and saying like open and then I just follow it on my in my finder. When you initialize it, though, um, if it, so that part where it says full path. Do you see where yeah. like my my actual folder where my website is is called class demo? Does yours say like yeah. class demo slash class demo? Um, like is it repeated on the full path part? Let me see. Open a repository. I mean, it's just I'm just clicking it. I don't know if it's ever telling me what that pathway is. And if you need to just keep cruising, you can. That's all right. Um, can you actually share your screen real quick? Yeah. Um, I had to change my default path. It was wrong. Yes. That is typical. All right. So um, click the open right. and then init. Go to init there. Ah, it's not open. I need to init. Was that my entire problem? Yeah. Yep, that's it. Okay. Then, okay, forget it. <laughs> yeah, so browse and then find the right okay. one. But see where it says okay. path right there? Yep. Go browse. Just make sure it's not repeating that. Yeah, so see not that. repeating. Yeah, but you have to put a name up above it too. So okay. Now, when you put the name in there, it will actually repeat. So then you have to switch the browse to be, it's annoying, but. Okay. Oh, and then can I manually switch that? Do I want to call it the same thing though? Yes. And then you on your browse, you're going to want to be a folder outside of that. A folder above? Yes. So now your full, like that. full path there does say what you want it to say. Okay. All right. All right. I will stop sharing. All right. Ooh. Thank you. Yep. Okay. Back here. 
So I'm creating the repository, right? Creating a new repository for the repository name. I'm just going to make it the same thing that I have it locally, class demo, OK? For my description, I can add a description if I want. I'll say uh, it's still website demo for EDLD 652. OK, it's going to be public. I am not going to add a readme or a git ignore or choose a license. Okay, I'm not going to do any of this because I want it to just be empty because my local already has everything I want on it. And I already have that repository even going. So all I'm doing here is trying to create an empty repository and then I'm going to link them and push everything up. Okay, so I say create repository. And now it just looks like this, it's just totally empty, right? So then Right over here where this clipboard is, I'm going to click that and that's going to copy that link right there. Okay. Then I'm going to go, going to go back to get Kraken. And on the remote here, I'm going to click this plus right here. That's going to add the remote. I'm going to click on URL. The name is going to be class demo. And then I'm just going to paste that URL in here. OK. Once I have all of that, then I just click Add Remote. And we should now be able to push. The first time we do it, it's going to say, what branch do you want to push to? And we're going to push to the main branch, which is what we have here. OK. Submit that. It'll take a second. But then it says pushed successfully. So we're going to go back to GitHub. I'm going to refresh here. And you can see all of the files are there now. OK. I'm going to give you a minute or two to make sure that everybody gets caught up and is at this point. OK. If you've gotten to this point, give me a thumbs up emoji um when you do okay all right we're doing a lot better than i feared we were i have a quick question uh-huh does the name for the folder has to be the same have to be the same with the like the repo name on github it does not have to be but i i would recommend having it always be the same the reason is just because if you were to clone this repo, then that folder would be the same. So you could have a folder locally that has a different name that is this repo, but it can be confusing because then if you happen to clone this repo too, then you'd have two folders that are named different things, but they're actually the same thing. Does that make sense? Okay, yeah. Okay, so um, given that just about everybody gave me the thumbs up, I'm gonna go ahead and keep going. So here we are now at our repo, right? And we're going to do a similar sort of thing that we did with dashboards to get them to publish. All right. We're going to go to settings right here. And then we're going to scroll all the way down and you'll see this GitHub pages. Okay. This is what we're going to use to publish. All right. For the source, we're going to say we want to publish the main branch, just like we did before. The only difference is instead of publishing from the root of that branch, we're going to publish from the docs folder. OK, so main branch with the docs folder. OK, then click Save. And it says GitHub pages source saved. Scroll back down, and you'll see the link there. OK, you can click that link, but I would say don't click the link initially because it probably won't work, and it might induce anxiety that is unneeded. So instead, I just spend this time to copy the link and then come back here to class demo. And then over here on my about, click this little gear and you can add that link here as your website. OK. I also tend to uncheck these things because this is not an R package. So there's not going to be any releases. There's not going to be any packages or environments. So we just delete that. That's going to get rid of these things down here. OK. Save the changes, 
we do actually have an environment with GitHub pages, but whatever. Okay. And we also see it has, it's associated with the MIT license and here's the readme, the readme has nothing in it, but. Okay, now we have this link that anybody who comes to this repo should be able to find pretty simply. If you click on that link, you will now see your website in its current form published. Okay. Give me a thumbs up if you get to that point. Daniel, the order of my posts is reversed compared to yours. Does that matter? Is that a setting? Yeah, so there is a way to manually order them. The, the issue with this comes when typically Distill does not expect you to have multiple posts on the same day. Um, there is a way to manually reorder them. I don't remember what it is off the top of my head, but you can also just change the date on them. It, the default is for the most recent one to be first. So if you made the this um, welcome one uh, older, then it would show up second. Does that make sense? Yes, thank you. Yeah, okay. So now we have a basic website, right? We're basically there. So let's go back to the slides and we'll go over a few other things, okay? So I'm gonna just kind of review this as I go through the slides now, what we just did. And then uh, we'll talk about a few extensions. All right, so the steps, right? You create a new project using a distilled blog, not a website. Then we're gonna say configure for GitHub pages, create a directory name. Then when you wanna author a new post, you just say distill create post. Okay, I'm using the namespace here. You can do that, or you could say library create library distill and then create post. Either way is fine. Um, but importantly, make sure that you do that create post just in your console, right? That's not something that you want in one of your blog posts. You could have it in a separate R script if you want, but you don't want it to render every time. You don't want that code to run every time you click build website. That's the important thing, okay? Then once you're ready, you can click build website and that's basically it. Then you're going to connect it to GitHub using the project first workflow and publish the docs folder, okay? Questions on any of that before we move forward? I don't really know what question to ask, but I was following along and everything seemed fine. And then I followed the link and there was nothing there. It just had like in, 404 message 404. and then yeah you yep. just have to wait that's all okay um yeah. well I, the other thing that made me worried was then i went back to get kraken and it's not showing any of the changes that were made to be able to stage the changes and commit them okay so you have you do not you have not been able to push all of your like your website's rendering on your local right yeah so i go to github have you been able to commit all of those changes that makes the website render? Um, it All it shows is the initial commit. And then, okay. so then I went back to our studio and just tried to make like a really simple change and then go back and it wasn't showing up. Try knitting. So I guess, okay, I'll try. That, that usually is where I get hung up. Cause I'm like, dude, I totally changed it. But unless you knit, it doesn't update the HTML, I think. It doesn't update the HTML, that's right. Yeah. But when you look here, you have this initial commit, right? But mm -hmm. then you do not have what I am calling create initial website. Is that nope. right? Yeah, that's correct. So that's your issue. Um, why you're not having that, I'm not sure. But we need to get all of this stuff committed and then get that pushed up to GitHub before it'll render. Okay. Okay. Other um, questions? Yeah, I kind of missed the part that you published on GitHub, get the link on to the GitHub, but I'm just wondering if I can still follow along if I missed that part. Yeah, you can. But let's okay. go ahead and just review it real quick anyway, because that's the okay. only thing I didn't really review. Yeah, thank you. So after we go to get Kraken, we commit everything, we push it up, right? And then this is now on GitHub, 
this is a copy basically of what I have locally, right? Now, all I wanna do is say, okay, this website is rendering on my local and I want it to render on GitHub, right? I want it to deploy. So what I do is I go to settings right here and then I'm gonna scroll all the way down and you'll see this GitHub pages part, okay? And then for GitHub pages, you're gonna to go to the source and you're gonna say publish the main branch and then from the main branch, publish the docs folder. After you do that, you'll click save. It will refresh the page. You'll wanna scroll back down again and you'll see the website link there. And it will not uh, render immediately. It will take a few minutes, like a minute probably most of the time. So what we're gonna do is just copy that then and come back over here and paste it in here. I'm gonna add my environments back because I realized we have an environment with the GitHub pages, okay? And now we end up with something that looks like this, okay? And then that link should take you to your website. Um, where did I get the link on that again? I copied the link, but how to get like- Get it in here? Yes. Yeah, so you click this gear right here and then website right there, you're gonna paste it in there. Got it, thank you, Daniel. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? All right, so back here now, that's basically it, <laughs> as I say here, right? All you have to do now, everything else we're gonna talk about from here on out for the next 20 minutes are just extensions, right? None of them are required or anything. So one additional thing that you can do is you can add categories to your posts. And that's kind of nice because then like, let's say you have a bunch of posts, some are about geographic mapping, some are about, you know, your substantive area of research, some are about modeling and some are about, um, you know, visualization. You can keep all of these in, as categories and then you just include that category tag and it's, it's a tag basically. And then on your home page, your home page will show up like this. So instead of just having your thing here, you'll have this categories over here and it'll list all of the categories that you have defined in your site with a little number next to them for how many of them there are. Okay, so let's try this real quick. Go back to, um, shoot, wrong thing. Go back to our studio. And then what we'll do is for this one, right? Our first one, let's just add some categories here. Categories. And then I'm gonna say one category is gonna be called uh, visualization. And another category is gonna be called modeling. Okay, so this post is associated with two categories, okay? Now, I'm gonna knit that just to make sure it's working. And it is, so that's good. Notice now I have these two little button things here, visualization and modeling, although you probably can't see that. Um, I'm gonna go actually to my welcome post also, and I'm gonna add a category there too. Um, so here I'll say categories, and I'm gonna add just, what did I call it, visualization, yeah. I'm gonna add just that one, okay? All right, now I'm gonna build my website and I'm gonna open this, oops, I'm gonna open this in the browser so we can look at it there. And then let's go here. Notice I now have this categories thing here, right? I have articles two, visualization one, visualization should be two. I must need to knit this one still, apparently. So I'll do that. And now we'll do build website. I know you can't see what I'm doing, but that's okay. I just knitted it is all. All right, refresh, there we go. All right, so visualization has two, modeling has one, right? And these are little links. So I can click that. And if I wanna do modeling, I get all the posts that, are, that have this modeling tag with them. 
if I have visualization, I'll get all of the ones that have the visualization tag, which is all of them, okay? So that's just like a little added nice organization feature. Another thing that is important is this underscore site.yaml. This is actually how you, you control like the navigation of your whole site, okay? So we're gonna change this a little bit. We'll go look at it and we're gonna add a little GitHub logo, a little GitHub icon that actually links back to our GitHub repo, okay? Because very commonly when people are looking at your site, they might wanna see the source code for the site, right? And that's gonna be your um, GitHub, right? So I'm gonna just copy this so I don't have to remember it. Then I'm gonna go back to our studio, okay? And I'm gonna go to my files over here and I have this underscore site.yaml, open that up. And here's my nav bar, right? So my nav bar, notice that I have home, and that's going to link to this index.rmd or .html rather, but it it is it's HTML in the docs folder. We have about, which is going to link to our about.rmd basically, although it's going to be HTML. Okay, and then on the right side, I am also going to add an icon for um, font awesome, font awesome GitHub. Okay, I could add a different one, but obviously I'm doing a GitHub um, link here. So that makes the most sense. href is gonna be the link, okay? I'm just gonna go to actual GitHub and I'm gonna copy the link to my repo and I'm gonna just paste it in there, okay? Then I'm going to save that and build my website. And let's just go back to uh, not there, Safari. Here's my GitHub. Here's my site. When I refresh this, it doesn't work. Why didn't that work? Um, build website. Hang on just a second. Open the browser. There it is. Okay. So there now I have this little link for GitHub. And when I click that, it takes me here. Okay. There's a bunch of other things that you can do like that. I have an example in the slides uh, for adding a drop-down menu. So here, this is like um, what I actually did when I used to use our Markdown websites, because this, this is very similar to our Markdown websites for the YAML. So on the left side versus the right side, right? So maybe on the left side, I, I want a menu for labs, right? So I can say the text is gonna be labs, and this is going to be a menu. And that menu is going to have these things. So the text for each of these is going to be what it's going to be called. And then for the href, you're just going to put the, the file that you want to reference there. Okay. And then that would give you a drop down that says getting started with R and visualizing distributions. And you could click on those and it would go to those specific links. Okay. That's not generally something that you want to do very often with blogs, but it's more of a nice website thing. If you have some um, overall ordering thing that you want to do, that's a nice way to do it. Base URL. So once your site is deployed, which ours is, then we probably want to change in our underscore site.yaml the base URL. Okay, that allows us um, to do a few other things. Um, and apparently base URL is not even in the underscore site YAML anymore by default. So let's go back there real quick. Um, and this is not that big of a deal, but it is a nice sort of thing. Okay, base URL. And then I'm going to just put the sort of home page for my website. Okay, so I'm gonna grab that and put it there. Okay. So this is now the, the actual GitHub pages link, okay? Any questions there? Okay, so Joe's That's asking at GDA. updates, yeah. Um, yeah. So if, if, it, if you're updating it locally, that's great, right? But now we want it to update on online, then all we have to do is go back to Git Kraken, 
And notice I have 11 files that have been modified and three that have been added. Okay, so this one was modified. This one was modified because I added the categories, right? So that's gonna add a bunch of different things, docs index, whatever, license. So some things have changed, all right? Usually you wanna be a little bit more careful about this, but there's often so many files it gets difficult to track. So I'm gonna stage all changes and I'm gonna say added categories and GitHub repo link, okay? Commit those changes. Now I'm gonna push. It's gonna push those to the GitHub repository and then automatically GitHub pages, it's going to rebuild the site. The changes are not gonna happen automatically. It's gonna take a minute or two, just like when we first built the thing. But if I go there now, um, let me switch my share again. So this is my website currently, right? And then I just accidentally clicked that. But um, so here's, here's my website currently. And when I refresh it now, you can see now the categories are there and my link is there. So every time you push to GitHub at this point, it's all gonna rebuild on its own. You shouldn't have to do anything at this point, different from what you would do with a normal R Markdown or a normal GitHub repo, right? You're just gonna push there. Once it pushes, then it should automatically update. Okay. Right on. It just seemed to hang up for a couple minutes for me, I guess. Yes, it, it is slow. So it doesn't happen right away. So you have to just be a little patient with it. What would be um, your instinct on troubleshooting if that was not the case? Because I am having that issue now with this repo and then also with my final project repo where I'm um, knitting or rerunning the file and it's just never updating. So um, I don't know. It, it should update um, if the because all that is happening. Let's go here. Um, so I would probably knit the file and uh, click the build website, and then it should update from there because we have the docs folder right here, right? And when you click build website, I think that's when the docs folder gets updated. So maybe it's just that you need to click build website, and then you can push those changes. But all that's happening is it's coming here and it's just it's just displaying this index.html. And so like with your with your class project, if it's a flex dashboard, if your flex dashboard is called anything other than index.html, um, then that could be the problem, like or or something like that. But I mean, generally, it's just going to be it's just going to be displaying whatever's in your repo. Right. Okay. Um, I might email you about it afterwards because everything yeah. seems to be named properly, but it's just the, the RMD will update, but the HTML is not, at least with my project. I don't know what's going so, on here. So that, that will be the problem then. If, if your RMD is updated, but your HTML is not, it's only going to display the HTML, right? So like if you, if you, if the HTML is looking correct locally, and it's called index.html and it looks correct, then it should look correct online too. But if for some reason that's not happening, like you're not pushing the most recent HTML or whatever, then that that would be a really weird issue, but that could be what's going on, something like that. Got it, sounds good, thank you. Yeah. Okay, um, we only have about five more minutes. I just wanna show a couple more things real quick. Um, and I didn't mean to go off of that because I don't need to go off of that. I just need to come over here. Okay, so um, you can do drafts, which is nice. So maybe there's a post that you're working on, but you don't want it to change your website, but you still want to push it to GitHub and everything. You can just use draft true, and then it will not actually propagate until you take off drafts true, and then it'll work. This is the part I wanted to get to. There's these different layout options, which are pretty nice. So um, layout equals L page, okay? This is just a chunk option. So let's go back to our studio and we'll go to our, some stuff with models one, okay? Down here, this is going to be a, a plot, right? I can just add another 
chunk option here where I say layout equals L dash page. And then when I knit that thing, you will see, um, hang on. You will see that it ends up popping out more like this. So let me actually do it this way because it's easier to tell on Safari. Okay, so here now notice my plot is it extends beyond sort of the, the boundaries, the margins of this thing, right? So that's L page. And you can also go L dash screen. I'm just gonna do it because we're short on time. And then I'll refresh it here. If I do L dash screen, then it goes even wider. Okay, it takes up the whole screen basically. Okay, so this can be a nice way to visually break things up because you have this like boundary that is like basically from here to here, right? And then you have these margins on the side. So you can have plots or tables, it works for tables too, where it extends beyond that and even all the way out to the full screen. So it can kind of break, visually break things up. The other reason that that is nice is the, that uh, side panel is nice is because you can use these asides, okay? So you just do aside, aside, and you'll get basically like those tufty notes where you get these little side notes on the side. And you can even include plots and things in there, okay? So if I just do this real quick, I'll do a bit for a plot. Um, okay. Okay, um, that didn't work because I didn't put it in an R chunk. But you, so this is actually an example of just the aside um, for text, right? And if we had like a paragraph here, it would just be on the side. It wouldn't look like quite like that. But I can also put it in an R markdown chunk. And I know you're not actually seeing my code, but um, you just have to trust me on it. Okay, if I put it in an R markdown chunk, then the actual um, thing will, the actual plot will show up there. Except I have to say that. Okay, so hang on, almost done. Uh, <laughs> okay, um, refresh, and there we go. There's a little plot over there with the code, right? And again, like you could have a full paragraph here and then a big plot like that. So it's a nice way to kind of incorporate some different visual, use up the space that you have on the screen a little bit differently. Um, the other thing is this inclu uh, knitter include graphics is an alternative to this sort of notation for including links to um, images and things. And what's nice is if you use that knitter include graphics, that'll allow you to use chunk options, which means that you can have an image of whatever, and you can use these same um, chunk options. So you can reference an image that's online, like maybe you just have a pretty picture uh, and of like, you know, a field or something. And then you want to say L screen, and then that'll be like a banner at the top of your, um, or somewhere in the middle to kind of break up the flow of the post or whatever. Okay, so this is all just additional stuff. The last part, if you, just run this code. I'll just go do it real quick um, because I can't help myself. If we come here, okay, to RStudio and just down here in the console, this is gonna be something we're just gonna do one time. Create theme and then you call that theme whatever you wanna call it, okay? So you could call it my theme, call it whatever you want, okay? It's gonna tell you some to-do things here, right? To-do, add theme, my theme.css to your site or article YAML, okay? I'm gonna do it to my site. So I'm gonna add, I'm gonna just copy this code, get my site.yaml, and then on my output, I'm gonna add a return here, space over two, colon, space over two, and then just add that code, okay? So my theme.css. Now we have my theme here. The thing that's nice about this is it gives you, it sets this all up for you. So now all you have to do is just change some things, right? So header color, I don't know, let's do, 12, 2, 2, 3, 
54. I have no idea what color that is, but we'll just try it. Okay. Build website. And uh, hang on. And there we go. So let me switch my share. Sorry. And now we have this green there. Okay. So this is just changing colors. That's all we're doing is just changing colors, basically. But you can change fonts. You can change all sorts of stuff there. And it's pretty straightforward. Okay. Not next Monday, but next Wednesday, we will talk a lot more about this kind of stuff, about theming. I'll talk about basics on CSS, et cetera. Okay. So we can hopefully get just a little bit of a window into that world. Okay. So that's the official class time for today. Um, if you want to hang around and troubleshoot, if you didn't get all the way there, um, please feel free to. I'm happy to hang out with you. But uh, that's all the time we have. So Monday will be um, geographic data. Please get your final links to me as soon as possible. And otherwise, enjoy the rest of your week. <laughs>